Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today, I would like to answer the questions that many students ask me the differences between flow along curve and flow along surface. And also, what is the difference setting in the option between those two commands? Are you ready? Let's get started. Before we get started, I would like to show you what I plan in mind to explain to you. As you can see on the left side, I have this curve here. If you look at the front view, they all in the same size. So it's kind of easy for you to understand which one is which the same, but the big difference on flow along surface. Now on the top right here, I have a bunch of a honeycomb here to represent the stone because you could have a B setting and arrange like that. So those group are grouped together. On this group, they are individual. So uh, they are not grouped together. And we want to see the, what's the difference. And I also would like to talk about the idea for this and how does it apply to Pave setting. So that's starting with the first one. We are going to take a look on the perspective. All right. So for the flow along curve, if you have this black one, the black line is represent the same length with this red one. When you use a flow along curve, you can just simply just type it flow. doesn't have to type the whole thing. Now it will ask you to select the object. We're going to select the whole thing and then hit enter. It will ask you to select the base curve. So the base curve will be this one, the black one right here. The target curve will be here. Now we got two options right here. The really important one is rigid. A lot of the time, this is going to change the entire look. If the rigid is equal no at this case, and we're going to click on here, you're going to see this one is flow and follow along uh, with it, and it's changing the shape in one direction, right? So I'm going to making a copy right here on the side. We're going to do exactly the same thing. going to pick up here, hit enter, pick up the base curve. Now, if on the rigid is equal no, if we click on this one, and we're going to click on the target surface, notice that this thing has become like a straight line. And the reason it become like a straight line is this whole thing is considered one piece. So when you have a rigid is equal yes, which means it will maintain the original shape, which is original one is the straight one. So in this case, we do need to have a flow follow the ring. We need to make sure the rigid is equal no. And let me move this one here so it's easier to take a look. I'm going to make another copy right here. So this time we are going to take a look what if we ungroup those become individual. Right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use the command flow and we're going to pick up everybody at once. Then we're going to hit, uh, is it rigid equal yes or no? I say if it equal no, and then we want to click on here and we're going to click on the target. As you can see, everything is flow like this way. Now we also want to do one more time. Let me pick up this curve right here and now we're going to do one more time we pick up this group and then we hit enter and then we hit this one now if, if the rigid equal yes now you have another thing is kind of rigid group equal yes or no and we have the option right there let's keep it yes and yes and see what happened now as you can see it keep it rigid yes so each individual will keep the original shape. Compared to this one, because it's treated as a group, so this is one piece. That's why it keeps it straight. In this case, it is follow, still follow the circle, but it is individually will keep it uh, straight on its edge. It's because those are not grouping together. So let's, let's do one more time. I'm going to pick up this one, making another copy. We do see another option right there. If we want to use the flow again, and let's, let me pick up this one, this group together, and we want to click on the base. 
Now you have the two options showing up here. Not only you have a rigid is equal yes, you have a rigid group. Right here I'm going to choose no. And let's see what happened. We are going to set the target right there. It's telling us this piece, it was original group it together. If it is already boolean union together, that's another story. But because this is only group together, I'm just telling the Rhino say, I no longer want them to group together, but I don't want to go back and, and group this one. So for the rigid group, I choose no. And it's actually those, those two uh, result is the same. All right, so that is for what that is. All right, and now let's take a look on uh, flow along surface. Now, this surface is based on this curve and it was just extruded um, into the shape. So I'm going to create UV curve and you are going to get a box like this and this box is completely represent this one. So if we have the surface uh, by using the surface command, we have this one, the surface from planar curve, we can fill it up this surface. All right, I'm going to borrow this guy and bring it right in the middle or roughly in the middle. As you can see, it is like half on the top, half on the bottom. All right, so we are going to use flow along surface. And when you use the flow along surface, I'm gonna pick up the object, hit enter, and I'm also going to pick up one of the corner and then on the target, I'm going to pick up the, um, the target corner. All right, so you are going to see something like that. Notice that I intentionally uh, not filling up this two gap. So you will see this is two gap right there. And the reason it has a two gap too is because there's a seam right here. The seam at this point, you can see the darker line is represent this edges right there. Okay, now if we want to compare those two, let's take a look on the render view. If I'm going to just hide it where the surface is, this two is no difference between the flow along curve and flow along surface. So that gives us a conclusion. If your curve is bending in only one direction, which is the circle like that, it doesn't matter which one you use. You use flow along curve and flow along surface, they are pretty much the same, okay? Now, what is a flow along surface if it is two direction curve? What I mean by two direction is you have one direction going with the circle and the other direction going this way on the opposite, like 90 degree different. So this is a two direction curve, right? So that's uh, use a flow along surface. And when we use a flow along surface, again, we're gonna pick up the object and we hit enter and we're gonna pick up this corner and we're gonna pick up the other corner and you got the rigid equal no right here. So you can, you can see this is actually stretching in two direction. Let me just hiding everybody here so it's easier for you to see and I'm going to turn it back on for you to see all of them. So let me hide in this one as well. As you can see on this one, not only it is curved in a circle direction, on the side, it does um, going in this direction as well, right? So it's a stretch on both sides. It's stretched both on the X, Y, and Z, all right? So now this is what we have flow along surface. All right, now let's take on the second option. We wanna use the ungroup one. So I'm going to borrow uh, this guy coming over here, and I'm going to bring those down somewhere close to the center and let's see if ungroup is going to change in anything so we're going to use flow along surface so we are going to pick up this uh, make sure you only pick up this uh, strip there and we're going to pick up the uh, base surface the target surface it is ungroup and the rigid is equal no if you have a rigid equal node, which will be the same result like the one that we have here. So let's try rigid equal yes, and we're gonna pick up this corner. All right, so notice that this has a gap in between. It's because this is not stretched at all. It's just follow the curve that you have. 
and then uh, you will maintain whatever shape exactly this shape will be this shape um, in this case we have a ridges is equal no and then so it will stretch on both surface and then so this is actually if you count it individually is actually bigger than this one so now if we ungroup it and the ridges equal yes and then we will maintain the shape uh, individually so now the question is you might ask well pj then if that is the case why don't we just use the flow along curve on this one so that will be even more correctly instead of having the gap in between you do have a maintain the shape as well and then um, it, you do have a little bit gap in between and that will work too yes that is correct um, that will work almost this one is the same with this one the reason you see it's talking touching on the bottom because I'm using this curve and uh, the surface is actually bigger diameter so if it's exactly the same diameter the result from here is actually the same with here now it coming into another question so if that is the same why do I, why don't I just use a flow along curve why do I need to use a flow along surface it's in other application and that's similar with the pave setting so let me show you why I'm going to use this exactly the same curve and just bring one copy right there and I'm also going to bring those copy down here and to mimic the way like pave setting I'm gonna scale it down on all of this right and then we're gonna making a copy so I'm just gonna make a copy from um, this point and snapping into this point right so the same thing it's going to go from this point we're gonna copy a bunch of them like this so this is more like a honeycomb structure uh, the same like a pave, one of the pave setting so in, imagine this is the pave setting okay so now how is this one going to flow on this one and I'm going to kind of just rotate it 180 degrees so the seam is on the bottom that's why you will see the pattern on the top okay we're gonna use flow along surface this one it's going to flow um, and on this one so now you can see this is completely stretched and it is structured it follow the two curve right so again if we maintain if we have a ridges is equal no and this is what happened it's bigger than what you have but you maintain the gap no gap in between because you stretch it right so let's do it one more time we are going to select the object this is the base and on the top rigid right now we want to equal yes and then we're gonna coming over here we're gonna pick up the surface now what you see is each of them is following the two directions so one direction is circle the other direction is going in this direction right but each of them is maintained individual uh, maintain the shape so imagine that if this is where the stone the stone won't be stretched right the in conclusion is if I have flow along surface and with the smaller pattern it work is actually better is because you can have the, your design follow the surface if your design is only one direction which the same like this green one it actually doesn't matter that you are using flow along curve or flow along surface now the differences between this guy and this guy is because the surface we are flowing has two direction and if your ridges is equal no then you are stretching the surface like this one and this one which it will by stretching will make its uh, surface area is bigger than our original area so i hope that answer your question about the flow along curve and flow along surface please let me know if you have any other question related to it join the membership for more video about my trick and tips on 3d model thank you for watching see you next